What's up, everybody? DJ Chance here. Now, in this week's sick episode, I'm going to be covering the Rodecaster Pro Podcasting Portable Studio. So we're going to get right into, hey, how long have you had this Rodecaster Pro? Uh, about three or four weeks. Let me see your receipt. You don't need to see his receipt. I don't need to see his receipt. This is not the Rodecaster you're looking for. This is not the Rodecaster we're looking for. He may go about his business. You can go about your business. Move along. Move along. Move along. So yeah, we're going to get right in. Hey! Uh, what? What? What now? What can I do for you? That is not six feet of social distancing. This is not six feet of social distancing. Move along. Move along. Move along like I know you do. That's not weird. So the Rodecaster Pro, what is it? Now this is a portable broadcast studio. And this thing right here is a game changer. You can use this for podcasting, use this for your live stream. One of the great things about this is that you do not need a computer to use this. This has a built-in micro SD card slot in the back. So I'm going to go through all of the features that are here, some of the new things that are here that weren't here on 2.0. This thing plugs in four microphones, which are phantom powered. You have the Class A servo bias preamps. You have the Aphex Oral Exciter on board with Big Bottom. So you get a little extra oomph to your sound. Oof. All of the settings for all the various things that this does can be accessed through the touch screen. This pulsating, hulking green button is the record button. You've got your headphone amplifier controls right here. You've got your monitor out. You have eight channels worth of stuff. You can plug in seven. The eighth channel is the built-in pads that are here. You can plug in an auxiliary where this phone is. There's a small 35 millimeter or 1 8 inch jack on the rear. You can plug in USB. This has USB-C in, in it, so you get the full 10 gigabits per second of speed back and forth. Back and forth and back and forth and back. The four mic inputs are XLR only. You do not have XLR combo TRS jacks, phantom powered. You have very long throw sliders that feel really good in the hand. They have just the right amount of tension. You have your pre-fade monitor. You have your mute button, so I could do... Uh, uh, uh... Uh, bird, 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 bird. You have a Bluetooth channel, and this was one of my biggest selling points about this, is that it had the ability to do phone calls from this thing. Just dial one, nine, hundred, nine, zero, nine, Jeff. And you can do phone interviews right on the fly with this thing. You can record parts of a phone call interview. Maybe you want to do sound bites. Bite it. Yeah. Yeah. You can do a lot with this thing. For its price point, it is absolutely unbeatable. Now at the top of the microphone section, you have the four pads that are here. And those are to access all the different settings that you have for each specific channel. So if I want to access my channel one, which is my main mic right now, I would press, just punch that in. And you can see from the menu, I can pick different microphones. Of course, they're all Rode microphones with the exception of the EVR E20. I like the fact that Rode recognized that this has been like an industry standard broadcast microphone for so long. You have a condenser setting and a dynamic mic setting. The only thing that's missing from here since they're acknowledging EV, there should be a button that says Blue Yeti and the other one should say Shure SM7B or an Audio Technica 2020 because then you have the mics that pretty much everyone's using. The pod mic was made specifically to go along with this board. So, of course, the first setting is the pod mic setting. So I would go back and I have my levels here that I can control. You have the virtual toggle button for your phantom power if you need it for your condenser microphones. You have your effects here, and this is where things get really interesting. You have your compressor settings, and you can enable your compressor. You have the threshold and your ratios and attack release, your gain. You can just disable it and sound something like this, which isn't much of a difference. I tend not to talk that loud where I need the compression. And if I go back to the other effects, you'll see that we have the Aphex Oral Exciter is right underneath, the virtual enable, your harmonics, your mix, and your tune. 
And at the bottom of the screen, there's this dot here. And what that's telling you is that there's also another screen for this. So I can swipe across. And there we have the Aphex Oral Exciter Big Bottom section. It's something that's been around for a long time. Back when I used to carry huge amp racks full of equipment, the Aphex Oral Exciter with Big Bottom was a, a pretty big deal. But I was a DBX man myself, and DBX had the subharmonic synthesizer, which was the SB120A. It gave out the much-wanted, deeper bass, especially for the dance hall and reggae that I love to play so much. I, 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 I. I like my bottom to be bigger than this, and I'm sure Sir Mix-a-Lot would agree. I can't help myself. I'm acting like an animal. Now here's my scandal. And you'd scroll back. And there you get your main screen for Oral Exciter. As you can see, this is pretty responsive too. This is pretty much like any touch phone. Light touches, and it'll change to your various menu screens. Your high pass filter this has, enable or disable. Your noise gate. I definitely use the noise gate. That thing is very handy, especially if you have some background noise that's going on. So this way you can actually add the threshold of it. So when you stop talking, that will cut off and you don't hear all of the things going on in the background. Adjust the threshold, adjust the attack, adjust the hold, the release, the range. You have your enable and disable. You have your de -esser. That's another fantastic thing to have, especially if you're somebody who may have more of a lisp or maybe you're just speaking more or you're more or you speak like Jafar in Aladdin when he turns into a snake. You'd like to see how like I can be. And there's the dot on the bottom letting you know that there's more to this. And you go to the next screen, you have your gain and your frequency. And scroll back and you, I'll be at my main screen for the de -esser. And then we have the reverb. Let's start off with the small setting. See, it gives you various room sizes. You have small, you have medium, you have your large, and then you have your magnum. And you can adjust all the various things you want there. If you want your level different, you can adjust the decay and you can adjust the damping of it. It can add a little bit of depth to your voice if that's something you're looking for. And if I want to go back to my home screen, I would just press the home button and there I am. And I can grab all my other settings. I can go into the settings. And there's my podcast mode. You see, I went mute there for a second because once you go into podcast mode, you're actually going into the library of your card and you can access all your podcasts. It'll show you the date and time. You'll have, you have a slider to slide which portion of the podcast you want to get to. It shows you how long it is, the date it was taken. And it also has the markers that you've marked in your track. You have all of your seven channels that you can control here. So if you want to set different settings for any of these, so for say, I want to do something different for my third microphone, I would go in there and set whatever that is. Let's say I just have a dynamic microphone or I have an EVR E20. I can change that. Settings are there built in. Now the USB one, the USB settings are good too because you've got presets built in. So you can set this for no normal. You can set this for no features at all, no presets. When you have no presets on for that particular channel, you cannot go to your next advanced setting. You'd have to pick either speech or music. Since I generally use the USB for music, I would just leave it in the music setting and I can go to my advanced settings and now that'll show you the oral exciter. So I can turn on the exciter, turn on the big bottom. I can have one without the other. And it follows the same pattern on the Bluetooth. Bluetooth has its volume control. You can add up to six decibels. Same thing with the USB channel. You can add up to six decibels. The presets are similar to the USB. You've got, you can turn it off completely. You can have it to phone call preset mode, speech mode, or music mode. And since this has the auxiliary input, since this is also the auxiliary input that's on the rear of the unit, I leave it in music mode because that's where I'd plug in my DJ controller. If you have a phone hardwired into this, you could put it in phone call mode and just test it out when you're on the phone, see what sounds better to you. Since sound is subjective anyway, and you go into your advanced settings and you have the same, you have the same access to the Aphex Royal Exciter. And the other thing I like here is that they've added a button for the compressor. And that's great because if you need to compress your entire setup all in one shot, you can do it right there. So this way I can just shut it off for all of the seven channels. 
without having to scroll through a whole bunch of menus like a lot of the car screens do now. You want to turn on your cooled seat, you got to go through four different screens and scroll because there's no buttons. They've put that right there. Right where you need it and where you can find it quickly. And the sounds button is the pads that are here. These pads hold pretty much anything you want to put in them. Pad by itself can absorb plenty. They're the same layout as anything you've seen on a lot of the bigger DJ controllers. Pretty much standard fare that you see on anything, whether it's Reloop or Pioneer or Denon. You have all these different banks of sounds and theme music that you can put in here. It comes with its own, but you can put any that you want. If I say something funny, I know that my reaction is going to be... <laughs> But in reality, it's going to be more like. But in my mind. Ha! Yeah! I kill me! So you can have a lot of fun with this. And I like that they've separated all of these sections as well. You've seen they've given the pad, they've given a nice outline to let you know this is all for this. These three right here, you're like auxiliaries. You have your three plebeian microphones and then your main master mic. Which is separated. separated. You have the pre-fade listen for your sounds as well. The thing I really like about this that wasn't on 2.0 that they have now in the 2.1, you can actually record something live onto this pad right there in the moment. You know, moment to moment. That's right on the fly. That you can even overdub it later. So if I want to start it over, let's, I want to overdub something. I can record my own thing right now. So if you're somewhere, let's say you're interviewing someone and you want them to give you a shout out, maybe you're interviewing a celebrity or someone who's important to you and you want them to give you any type of recording right there. Right there, right there, right there. You can hit record and I'll do this now. Ta-da, I'm here giving DJ Chance the best thing in the world a shout out yay and i can go back and play that right there on the fly ta-da i'm here giving dj chance i can hit overdub i can start playing whatever it is that was in this pad so i can go right ahead and hit the record button anytime in the track and it'll overdub so let's start that up ta-da i'm here giving i am DJ so magical chance don't you love me yes don't listen to this guy in stutter the world a shout he's amazing out. Yay. he just doesn't believe it and now that overdub, I can either discard the overdub or I can save it. If I don't like what I hear, I can get rid of it and do it again. Ta-da, I'm here giving I am DJ so magical. Chance don't you love me? Yes. Don't listen to this guy stutter. The world a shout He's amazing. Out. He just doesn't believe it. <laughs> I don't know. It makes me laugh. And that's all that really counts, right? So if I don't like that, you can just discard it. So go back to the normal sound that you had in there without the overdub. Ta-da, I'm here giving DJ Chance. All right, that's enough of that. And then record whatever else you want to do. So that is actually a phenomenal feature. That's one of the great additions that they added with the 2.1 software. Having the ability to overdub like that is a really welcome feature. You can get very creative with something. You can fix mistakes. I really love that they put things like that in here. Hey, everybody, this is DJ Chance. Thank you for watching the show. Please be sure to like and subscribe and, and sub tell all your friends. Share with all you saw there cut off because you can only overdub as long as the original recording was. So if, if I recorded 10 seconds. For those 10 seconds or less, I'm free. I can't overdub 12 seconds. It's going to cut off. <laughs> it's only going to give you the original length of the original recording. And then you want to get rid of it. You just discard it. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't the clear button will just clear out whatever it is you do have recorded there. You can have it pause. This was something that is a great addition to have that the 2.0 firmware did not have. You have the ability to pause whatever you're playing. Maybe you have an interview that's recorded into one of your pads and you and your colleagues want to discuss it on a podcast. You could actually pause it where it's at, speak about whatever you want to speak about, and then continue it from that point on. The other great thing is you can change the color scheme of these buttons. Maybe I don't want this button to be red. Maybe I want it to be white. So if you want to change the colors, you can do that. You can see they're all, I can change it into anything. And that's each and every button. I can make them all the same color if I want. And play is just for it to just play out. 
see, and it won't stop. It'll just play until it's completion. Just a little loving early. Once it's completed and satisfied, it'll stop and roll over and send you home. Its default mode is the latch mode, which would be like this. So it'll always restart from the beginning in latch mode. And the replay is just basically the stutter function that you'd find on a lot of DJ controllers. So fairly straightforward, a lot of capability with this thing, a lot of customization. And then I have my blank banks and all the different DJ sounds and tools. The settings mode up on the top of the main screen will bring you to the settings for all the different features. So if you have your headphone mode, you can limit your maximum volume. And says this will increase the volume for all headphones. So this way you don't blow anyone's ears out. And if you want to turn it off, it's already, you know, it'll ask you if you're sure you want to turn this off. So it gives you that safety feature as well. So I'd hit yes, and now it's really loud in my ear. And you can boost the volume. Let's say it's not loud enough. Maybe you're in a studio with very loud monitors, or you're at some, or you're on stage at a function. You're at a festival, maybe, and you're backstage doing some kind of recording. You're in one of the main VIP tents. You need just a little extra volume. You turn that on there, and it's warning you there. And it gives you the warning. And if you shut it off, if you go to turn it on, it'll also warn you. This will increase the volume. It'll give you that nice warning. Do you want to kill your eardrums? Yes. Always yes. So we can go back and we can adjust the brightness of the screen. And I'm going to shut the light off in here so this way you can see it. I, see it. I, see it. I can adjust the brightness of the screen itself. I can adjust the brightness of the pads and the pads on the bottom. So if I want their active state to be where they are right now, the brightness you see them, or I want them lower. I can pretty much shut them off and have them bright when they're in their active state. So now when I press one of these buttons, now it'll be brighter. The brightness of the record button in inactive mode, that always stays the same brightness of green. And it's good to have that adjustment. This way you can differentiate when you're live with one of these channels or not. The micro SD card mode, it gives you the ability to format your card. It shows you how much time you have on your particular card. It also gives you what's called podcast transfer mode. When you engage the podcast transfer mode, you're taking everything that's on your card already and transferring it over to your computer. So I would turn this on and it's asking me, am I sure I want to do this? Yes. Now it's busy and now it's in podcast transfer mode. So I can't record, I can't hit any of the buttons, I can't add anything additional, I can only take what was already on the card and transfer it into your DAW software on your computer. And when you're done, it asks you again, gives you the warning. Yes. And now you see the button turned back into green. Now it's ready to record again, and recording is as simple as just hitting the button right there. When you do that, it gives you the timer there. So this way you'll know how long you're recording. You've got pretty big numbers. You didn't have them like that in 2.0 software. You have the marker setting, so if I want to talk about mic section number one begins here, and I can put a marker right there. Or as a DJ, when you're making a mixtape, you can mark where your tracks are, so you don't have to worry like, oh man, where was my song two or three? Was it eight minutes and four seconds in? Or You can go right to the marker. When you go back into that mode and play the podcast back, you will be able to skip all through your track to, to each and every marker without having to scroll your finger. When you want to stop recording something, you just go right ahead and hit stop. It's instantly ready to go. The next mode you have is your Bluetooth. The Bluetooth you can press in and it's just so you can turn it on and off and you can hit pair and it's going to tell you 
you're going to tap Roadcaster Pro, and the light starts to blink to let you know it's ready to be paired with something. We'll just cancel that out of there. And when you are connected with whatever device, it'll show you there whatever device you're connected to. And you go into the extras, you go into the advanced screen, and you have even more control. You have your information, your firmware. You can see it's 2.1.0 beta. You can change your date and time. It's 7.16 p.m. On Memorial Day 2020, you have your reset, which will bring you back to factory settings. You have your multi-track settings. This is another great thing to have. That's something that was really needed. You can have all of your tracks actually separated. For those of you DJs that do remixes or anyone that's in production and knows what stems are, that's basically what you're doing. You're transferring each of these tracks into your DAW as one file. You'll have one file with all of the tracks that were recorded on that particular file. So if I had four microphones on and I had music in the background, now those five channels are going to be in that one file and you can master them or process them in post on your own separately. Maybe you want to take out channel three. Maybe someone was a little too loud when you heard it back, too bassy. Whatever it is you need to do, maybe you want to someone, change someone's voice to a cartoon voice. That's all possible in multi-track mode. You could pick to have the audio processing on or not when you transfer those multi-tracks into your DAW software. This way you can add your own processing and you won't have to be stuck with just the processing you have. Or maybe if you had the oral exciter on and you prefer it without it, you can add it if you want to with a plug-in. I have it set to bring my multi-tracks into USB mode. This way it'll go right into my computer because my computer has huge hard drives. When you do multi-track into your micro SD card, it takes a phenomenal amount of space. So if you had a short few minutes that you recorded, let's say like I'm doing now, you know, you did one channel and let's say it takes two gigs of memory. If I do all eight of these things running on a whole, for an hour long show, let's say, you're gonna take a, like 40 gigs of space. I'm not sure what the exact number is or math is, I'm just guessing here, but it takes up so much more space because I've already done that when I first got this. I did recording and then I tried multi-track mode and then the file was, it was like 22 gigs. The same file but on its own, when I separated it, it was like a, you know, 1.4 gigs or something. It was something ridiculous. It was a huge leap from having single track to multi-track on the SD card. So if you've got a terabyte SD card, go for it. Go for it. Or if you have a portable hard drive, an external hard drive, you can plug right into your USB. I plug it directly into my MacBook. And you have your post fader enabling switch there. Your audio section, you can adjust the audio. You can enable mix minus. And that is absolutely one of the best features that I am so glad they had added to this unit. Mix minus is for those phone call interviews. What ends up happening with a lot of phone call interviews that don't have this feature the guests talking on their phone tend to hear the echo of themselves talking on their phone. There's sort of a feedback loop that they hear. Mix Minus will take that effect off. It will send them only the sound of what they're talking in the moment, not the sound as it's coming through the board and through our headphones to us here. They will get that, just what they're hearing. That is fantastic because I can't tell you how many times where during a phone interview, someone has mentioned the, that they hear a reverb or some kind of feedback. So that right there, I always leave on because I never want that to happen ever again. Never, 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 never. And your channels here, you can enable your pre-fade listen, which is enabling what you're listening to in your ear. Now, whenever you're listening to something in your ear, you cannot hear what is playing live. Right now, I'm pre-listening to this channel. Even though there's nothing there, I cannot hear what's coming out of my microphone now. I can only hear myself talking, but not through the microphone. So that's just something to be aware of. Don't freak out like I did when I accidentally hit one of these buttons and didn't know what the hell happened. I thought I broke the machine. So you can shut that off if you're really confident in what your mix is and you don't want to hear it. Now you don't have to really worry about it. Now all your channels will have the pre-fade listen. And next, after enabling the pre-fade listen, you have what autocorrect always thinks you're writing, even though you're not. So you can have the feature of ducking. This way, if I'm speaking and there's music playing, the music will duck down a bit over my main mic. So I always leave those two on, along with mix minus. 
Then you have your monitor settings and basically it has auto mute your outputs and you can disable the level knob. Now, I like to have as much control as possible on my knob. That pretty much covers all of the things that you can do on this machine in those areas. Now, the other things to cover in the screen itself, you can see on the bottom of the screen here, you have the various numbers and you have the symbols for your channels. I have the pre-listen feature on, so it's showing me in the bottom that I'm in green. Now it's hitting red because I've gone over my compression limit. So you have these visual indicators of everything that's happening. So I know, okay, I'm in green there. Let me turn that off. And now I'm in white and that'll happen with each of the channels. You see if they're all in pre-listen mode, all the things are in green. It's not easy being green. And that happens with the symbols as well. So if I want to pre-listen my USB, my USB turns green. The auxiliary or the phone symbol will turn green and the Bluetooth will turn green. The music note that you have here will turn green. The only feature that you're missing from the pad section is the actual mute button. You have no ability to mute. You got to be fast with the fader. You can only mute the seven channels. And as you saw, if I get a little too loud, it's going to show me that I'm in the red. So it changes color and it'll show it on the top and the bottom. Another great feature with the pad mode. The music note here lights up and it's giving you the countdown timer of how long you have until it ends. If you have a quicker one that's going, you're going to see that, that the color of whatever the button is, is going to start to drain. It looks like an hourglass spilling out all of its sand. You have until the sands run up. One more thing to be aware of, when you turn this unit on and off, be sure that your monitors or your speakers or even your headphones are in the off or all the way volume down position. This unit unfortunately does a pop when you turn it on and when you power it down. Headphones and hopefully you can hear the popping sound. So let's do that. Let's go out and rage, man. Let's drink. Let's get so f***ing high. We black out and can't even remember our names. And then let's do unspeakable things to people we are never going to see again. Let's do that. Don't know if you picked up that click there. There were two of them. So now I'm going to power it down. Now I'll power it up. They really should have added a soft start and a soft off feature like most power amplifiers do. That's just something unfortunate that Rode overlooked, but I will be giving them a message about it and hopefully they'll address it with a future firmware update. Just want you to be aware. The other last couple of things about this really are just the feel of the unit. It's a good feeling unit. It's, it is plastic, but... It is plastic, but you throw this in a case and it's going to be protected. There's already quite a few different cases you can put this in. This thing's really light. It's a really good looking piece. It looks very modern. It looks good on your desk. The shape of it has been very nice. They did their homework with making this a user-friendly shape, I feel. If you have this on your desk, it's nice and slanted. You have this area underneath for cable. I can just run the cable right underneath and it's fantastic for cable management. This way you don't have a bunch of wires just sticking out. You can actually run them through here. It'll make your area look that much cleaner. On the back of it, you have basically everything I was telling you. You've got your power button here. You've got this locking power plug and that's another good thing that they thought of there. It screws on so you don't have to worry about this thing being pulled out by accident and losing power mid podcast. Here's your USB-C port which I can't unplug right now because it's going into the camera. Here's the micro SD slot, and I'll show you the card I have. This is one of their recommended cards. And if you can see that, it's the Samsung Evo 256 gigabyte. So be sure to use the Samsung Evo or the SanDisk Extreme. There you've got your left and right balance monitor outputs or just your speaker outputs. You've got your four headphone outputs right here built in the back. That's really convenient, and I like that they kept them all quarter inch. They didn't give you a 1 8 inch jack. You have one 1 8 inch headphone output, and that's actually in the front of the unit right here. Your channel 1 control controls channel 1 on the rear and the headphone jack on the front of the unit. So just be aware of that. And there you have your auxiliary or aux input 
it's a one eighth inch jack or a 35 millimeter and you have your xlr inputs all input it's all phantom power so all in all this thing is just a beautiful piece to have they've given you huge rubber feet so this thing doesn't go sliding anywhere they've given you a lot they didn't give you these little teeny tiny feet like most of this thing have this entire thing is a very sticky rubber so it doesn't slide all over your table or your console. So all in all, this thing is a really good piece, very lightweight. Underneath, they've given you these small little openings on the bottom. In between where the feet are, you've got this little access right here for smaller cables. That's come in useful for me for the USB cable and for the auxiliary cable when I've needed it to go underneath the unit and come out through here instead of having the unit resting right on top of the cable they've given you a little channel here the same with the front i found the front one useful for the same fact if i have something that i have to plug in the cable can run right from under there and i can have it run under the channel there and run under the channel in the front without it laying right on top of the cable and causing any damage <laughs> So thanks for watching everybody. If you found anything in this video useful, please like and subscribe, maybe share with a friend. If you have any suggestions or new ideas, please put them in the comments below. Maybe there's something that I did wrong in here, or maybe you know something about this particular unit that I don't, and you can help me learn something new, and then hopefully I can pass that on to someone else as well. I'd love to learn as much as I like to teach, and it's kind of like Jim Quick says, when you teach something, you get to learn it twice, and I really believe in that. So if you have something that you can show me to make myself better, I have no problem with anyone sharing any of their comments or feedback with me. So please put them in the comments below. Learn all of this gear, master and make money and wear a mask.